We are continuing our study through the book of Exodus this coming Sunday at 8.30, studying the Ten Commandments, also known as the Decalogue. Now, these are God's laws, not Moses's, just as the people are God's, not Moses's. And in Exodus 20, verse 1 and 2, it reads, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. See here, God is revealing who he is, our God and deliverer, our lawgiver and guide. He starts here with his relationship with us. He is our God. We need God to morally instruct and to guide us, to bring us out of slavery. The Ten Commandments express God's moral standards for human behavior, both for us towards him and for us towards others. They are echoed in the New Testament and are timeless and unchanging truths for all society. The laws were not invented at Mount Sinai. Theologian Meyer wrote, It is wrong to steal, murder, or covet, not primarily because these sins are forbidden in the Decalogue. These are forbidden by the Decalogue because they were previously forbidden by conscience, and they were forbidden by conscience because they are forbidden by the nature of things, and the nature of things is God. Everything traces back to God, our Creator. He is our moral lawgiver just as he is our creator, the creator of the whole earth. He made nature and he made us. The Ten Commandments are a God-based moral code for us. The idea of a God-based moral code has become less and less popular. Now the tendency is that any moral code should be based on an individual's inner sense of right and wrong, good and bad, hot and cold, feelings and self-defined definitions and dreams and desires not based on a standard set by our creator God. Yet the Bible tells us in Romans seven twelve that the law is holy, just, and good. See, God's law acts as a guardrail keeping humanity on a moral path, as a mirror showing us our moral failure and our desperate need for a savior as a guide showing us the heart and desire of God for his people. He gives the law for our own good. So we read it with obedience. That's what we see in Exodus 19, 3 through 6 and Exodus 19, 20 to 22 with reverence, with respect for God. The first commandment, you shall have no other God before me. Seen, for example, in the New Testament in 1 Corinthians 8, 6 and 1 Timothy 2, 5, this first commandment is all about God's identity and our fidelity to him. We must make a choice that God will be our God. The second commandment, you shall not make for yourself an idol, is seen in one example in the New Testament in 1 John 5, 21, among others. The second commandment speaks against creating something with your hands or in your heart that either reduces God or replaces him. Check out Isaiah 44, 9 through 20 for examples of the folly of idolatry. We must examine our hearts for the ways that we have allowed any false god or idol to enter in. The third commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God seen in just one example among others in the New Testament in 1 Timothy 6, 1. Throughout the whole Bible, God reveals himself with more more than 350 names and titles. These are all to express the vastness, the greatness of his character and nature, his holiness. When we misuse God's name, we malign, dishonor, and disrespect the character and nature of our creator God. Common ways we break the third commandment include blasphemy, perjury, hypocrisy, but even doubting his good character. The fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. God implemented a Sabbath day of rest for our benefit and for his honor. The purpose of the Sabbath is remembrance and rest, and the ultimate rest is in Jesus. The fifth commandment, honor your father and mother, is seen in the New Testament in Ephesians 6, 1 through 2, and Colossians 3, 20. And since God has defined the family and delegated authority to parents, when we honor our God-fearing and following parents, we honor God because they are his representatives in the home. The sixth commandment, 
you shall not murder, seen, for example, in the New Testament in Romans 13, 9 and 1 Peter 4, 15. In Hebrew, this word translated murder, lo rosh, has a very different meaning from kill which is permissible in certain specific circumstances, including accidental homicide, justifiable homicide, capital punishment. Now, these are echoed in Numbers, Exodus, but also in Genesis, and then looking forward in Romans and in Matthew as well. The Sixth Commandment condemns the deliberate, malicious, and unlawful taking of a human life. It is about the protection and sanctity of human life, which is made in God's image. In all levels of development, from conception to natural death, God is the author of life. Committing murder is assuming authority that belongs only to God. God values life, and so should we. He gives life as a gift, and we should cherish it, cherish it, protect it, and defend it. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery, is seen in the New Testament, for example, in 1 Corinthians 9, 6, verses 9 through 10. God values and defines marriage and ordained it as a loving, binding, holy, and lifelong commitment between one man and one woman. Adultery violates the sacred covenant bond. God calls for moral purity before marriage and fidelity in and throughout marriage. Still, he offers forgiveness and grace for those who have fallen. The eighth commandment, you shall not steal, is seen, for example, in Ephesians 4, 28. Now we know everything really belongs to God. We read this in Psalm 24, 1 and 50, 12 and 1 Chronicles 29, 11. And so taking, borrowing, withholding, defrauding, all these things dishonor God and others. This commandment, therefore, motivates us to live by an ethic of honest hard work, to respect others' property, to trust in God's provision to meet our needs, and to honor him by honoring others. The ninth commandment, you shall not give any false testimony against your neighbor, is seen, for example, in Revelation 21.8. The ninth commandment is a call to truthfulness. God is the God of truth. That's what Psalm 31.5 says, and it's impossible for him to lie. Hebrews 6 talks about this. God wants us to walk in honesty and truthfulness as he is those things. We are called to truthfulness, and where do we find truth? In Jesus. The tenth commandment, you shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is seen in Colossians 3, 5. And to covet is to desire with envy anything that belongs to another. And this can lead to jealousy and greed and lust and discontentment. See how the law explains what sin is. See how the law exposes the sin in ourselves. See how it leads us to see our great need for a savior. It all points to Jesus, who's the only one who ever kept the law perfectly. He taught people to obey the law. We see that in Matthew 22 and Mark 1. He elevated it so that we can all see how much we need him, the perfect one. All while he obeyed the law himself. We see this in John 8, 46 and 1 Peter as well. The Mosaic law was given in part to show us how completely and totally incapable we are of keeping it. We who naturally lie and steal and cheat and covet are unable to please God by law keeping. But Jesus, because of Jesus, we can, Galatians 2.16, put our faith in Jesus Christ that may, we may be justified by faith in Jesus and not by observing the law. When we put our faith in Jesus, the law has no power to condemn us because he paid our penalty. We are no longer bound to it. Yet our everlasting uncreated father doesn't change his standards of truth or morality. We're still to obey, but out of love not duty or works or trying to impress his or save ourselves, which we can't do. His, law, his love fulfilled the law. We love him and we wish to honor him by following in his ways. There's a poem by William Cooper, To see the law by Christ fulfilled 
and hear his parenting voice changes a slave into a child and duty into choice. Child of God, may he fill you with his love and joy and spirit today and always as you continue to love and serve him and serve others because of your love for him, seeing always how he is good and how he fulfills it all.